Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get the regular updates of my channel and do not forget to like, comment and share. Hello everyone, welcome back to SAS with ServiceNow. This is part of training for learning JavaScript with ServiceNow. The next topic is conditions in JavaScript. What is conditional statement in JavaScript? Conditional statement is used to perform any action on the basis of conditions. In JavaScript, we have conditional statement like if in which code is executed if condition is true. Then else in which code is executed if same condition is false. Then we have else if in which Code is executed if another condition is true. And then we have switch in which multiple block of code is executed alternatively on the basis of the expression's value. Starting with if statement. The syntax of if statement is you write if keyword, then you put condition in brackets. And then you put curly brackets, that is opening and closing curly brackets. And within those brackets, you write the code which you want to execute when condition is true. Next is else. The syntax of else statement is you write else keyword. And then you put opening and closing curly brackets. In this case, you don't need to put any condition. So in else statement, you don't need to put any condition like we did for if statement. And then within cur curly brackets, you write the code which you want to execute when condition is false. So if you will write if and else together, then code will look like this in which first code will be executed if condition is true. So if we have the first condition, if it is true, then action one will be taken. That means the code which is basically written in action one, that will be executed. Else, if that condition is not true, in that case, else statement will run and the code in action two will be executed. Else if. Now the syntax of else if is, you write else, and space and then you put if so these are the two keywords which you have to use together else space if and then you put conditions in bracket and then you again start with opening and closing curly brackets so you have opening curly brackets and closing curly brackets and within these brackets you have to write your code which you want to execute so whenever the condition will be true, the condition which you are mentioning in else if, then this code will be executed. Now you can also write if and elf else if together in which now condition one is true. Let's say if you're writing this code where we have condition one and we have else if condition two. So if condition one will be true, then this action one will be taken. That means whatever code you will write between these brackets of if statement that will be executed. And let's say condition is whatever condition we are putting, the condition is returning false. In that case, it will go for next line of code where we have else if condition two. In that case, if condition two will be true, then this action two code will be executed. So whatever code you'll be writing in this else if brackets, the curly brackets, that code will be executed. Apart from if and else, we also have switch statement, which is used for conditions as well in JavaScript. The syntax of switch statement is you start with switch keyword and then you put expression in brackets. And then you put opening and closing curly brackets in which you write different possible cases for the value of expression. 
So you start with case, that means case keyword, and each expected value, and then colon, and then you put the code which you want to execute. Now after that, you have to write break keyword. So I've not written in this particular code, in this example, but after every case, you have to use break keyword. Now break is something which is used in JavaScript. So if you do not want to execute further lines of code, in that case, you can use break. So for example, if we got the statement matched, so if case A got the same value, that means it is going to run the code written in case A. And if you are putting break, then it will not go to other cases. So similarly, it will keep on checking all the values. So whatever values you are expecting in that expression that you can mention in the code. Then we have case B. So let's say you're expecting three values or maybe just two values, A, B. And if nothing is being returned from that expression, in that case, you would use default. So default and then whatever code you want to execute. So if A will not be found, B will not be found. In that case, the, the code which is written in default case will be executed. Let's understand conditions with examples, with practical examples. So let's say we have a variable A and that is equal to 100. And you have to print maybe some value, maybe a string that if A is more than 100, then you should print something else not. So how you will achieve it? Maybe it's a requirement of your program. So we have A equal to 100. And if A is more than 100, then it should print something else not. So what I will do, I will start with if, because we are just checking one condition. And we want that condition to be true. If it is true, it should print something. So in that case, I will start with brackets. And here I will put if A is more than 100. And I will put curly brackets. And here I will write the code which I want to execute. What exactly I want to execute? Because I have to print it. So I will put gs.print. And I will do A is more than hundred so if i will execute it will it print something so as of now you can see it is hundred but a is not more than hundred so let's try to uh, run this code if i will run this i will not get any output because condition is not matched because this is returning false because a is not greater than hundred it's not more than hundred so in that case, what I will do, let's make it one, one, zero, one. So I have changed the value and this time this will return true. So this is how you write if statements. So if we're writing this keyword, if we are writing here condition and condition is if a is greater than hundred, if that's true, if it is true, that means if this is, this is returning true in that case this should execute this code and the code is print something the a is more than 100 and this time if i will run this you can see i am getting the right output a is more than 100 and in actuals yeah in reality yes it is more than 100 that's the reason i am getting this output now let's say we, we want to we want to print something else that let's say if a is not more than 100 that it should print a is less than 100. So if I come over here in that case what statement I have to use. So in that case I will use else. I will start with curly brackets. Now in this in this curly brackets I will print gs dot print and I will write a is less than 100 now if I will run this code this will definitely print this particular out output again the reason behind it because it is returning true 
And if it is false, then only it should print this one. That's how else statement works. So here it's returning true. Here it's, it's for false. And we already have a value more than 100. So if I run this, I will get the same output. A is more than 100. But let's say I will change the value of this A. So I will make it 99 this time. I'm making it 99. And now I will run this. So what do you think? What exactly it should print? So this time this will not print this particular code. This, it will not be able to execute. It's not about printing. The first thing is execution of the code. So if condition will be true, then only it will execute this code. And if condition is false, then it will execute this code. So in this case, I will run this and you will see a different output and that is A is less than 100. And the reason behind it, because A H actually is actually less than 100. If, for example, over here we have A is greater than 100, then it would execute this code which will print this particular string A is more than 100. But as per our example, it is returning uh, false. So this one is returning false and that's the reason it is printing th this particular uh, output. Overall, this is executing this particular code. Now we had another, another statement as well in JavaScript for conditions and that is else if. So when exactly you can use else if? So in that case, uh, you can use else if when you want to match with any other condition. So maybe let me start over here and what I will do, I will maybe just remove this one. I will do else if, well, that's how you use else if a statement. So I'm putting if a is greater than 100 and here I will use else space if. So if I'm using else if, then I have to give the condition and I will start in, in brackets and here I will put a is less than 50 and here I will write a is less than 50. So if I will run this code now, so we are using if else if this time. So if this will return true, it will execute this code. If this will return true, it will execute this code. So in that case, I have a 99 and I think what I can do, I can make it 101. So, and I can maybe, yep, let's run this. If I run this, you can see it says A is more than 100. The reason behind it, because this time it was able to execute this particular code. This was, uh, this one was not executed because the value of A is not less than 50. Now, if I have to execute this particular code, I will just change the value over here and that will be maybe 49. So you can see it will skip this code and it will go to this code where we have written else if A is less than 50. So if I run this, you can see it says A is less than 50. So that's how you create different Con conditions, different conditions in JavaScript. So depend on the kind of use case, different depend on the kind of requirement you get from your customers. If I talk about service norm perspective, I think you will definitely use lot of conditional statements in JavaScript um, in in service now while while you will do the development because uh, I think in service now. You, you will you will try to run a lot of logic because that's how overall scripting performs. You, you write a script uh, on the basis of different conditions which you will definitely get in ServiceNow while, while performing coding in JavaScript. Now let's talk about another statement we have for conditions that is switch. So let's say we have this var a, so we will keep as is and I will make it maybe one. Now what I will do, I will, I will print some values on the basis of the numbers I get for A. So for switch, I will start with this switch keyword and in the bracket, I will put maybe just A. That's, that's it because it will basically check the value of A. 
So in that case, I will start with curly brackets. Now within these curly brackets, I will start with case one and I will do colon. And here I will write the code which I want to execute. So I will print something. So I will do gs.print. So let's say we will do Sunday for, and then I will give break. Now here, if the value of A will be one, it will print Sunday. Then I have case two and I will just copy this and I will mention it's Monday and I will provide break again. And now what I will do, I will just copy this and try to print multiple values. And then, or maybe we will start with Monday. And if nothing will be given, then we will print Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, And then I have Thursday. Uh, okay, if you have written everything, let me put Friday as well. Or we will ignore Saturday for now. That's fine. This is just our demo. And here I will write one, two, here I will write three, here four, and here I will write five. And then we have to use default one. So I will write default. And then I will put gs.print. This is Sunday. That's it. If I'm not able to get that value. So in that case, this is our switch statement. And we have put in our, uh, basically the variable where we will capture the value and it will check what exactly the value we have for this A. So that's how you write the expression over here in the brackets. So now I will run this. So this time it should print Monday for sure. So if I will run this code, you will see that it is printing Monday. The reason behind it, because the value of A is a one right now. Let's say I put zero, but we are, we're not printing any day for zero. So what, what, what do you think? What exactly it should print? So it should print this particular code. It, it should execute this code and it should print this is Sunday. So I will click on run script and you can see it says this is Sunday. So this is how you create switch statements in, in JavaScript. As per the use case, if I talk about ServiceNow point of view, you will rarely use switch statement, but it depends. I, I, I think I cannot say that you will not use at all. You might use it. I think uh, you might get those kind of situations in which you might use switch as well. Depend on the kind of uh, kind of logic you want to implement or the kind of requirement you have. Uh, but but majorly you will use if else if and else statements switch will also be used. But as I mentioned, if else if and else will be will mostly be used in ServiceNow scripting, even in JavaScript. But if I talk about in general JavaScript uh, programming, you you might use uh, switch as well, maybe much more than uh, if and else. Depend on the use case, depend on the requirement you get. So that's how you you create switch statements in JavaScript, and that's how you can do programming. Uh, with the help of switch statements and different statements which we learned like if, else if, and you can utilize these different statements, different conditional statements uh, in JavaScript, in ServiceNow as well to get different kind of, or you to run different kind of logic so that you can get different kind of output from those uh, logic. So thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.